that we are here on Y254 on this beautiful afternoon, on this beautiful Saturday also where we are waiting for some of the biggest matches when it comes to the world of football. The UEFA Euro final will be happening tomorrow, Italy versus England. And also the Copa America will be waking up to watch that one considering the game will be upwards of 1 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning and we will also be watching South America's greatest team battle it out. That is Argentina versus Brazil. It is also another final, Eric, that people have not much followed about it. But now, when they hear it is Brazil and Argentina playing it out, comes to mind also. I think the Copa America was overshadowed by the Euros yes. for two reasons. One, uh, uh, people love uh, Euro, European football, uh, European football yes. and also the timings mm -hmm. when the games are being played. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I don't think very many Kenyans will wake up at 3 a.m. to watch a game of football. <laughs> Maybe some here yeah. and a few others. <laughs> there's a curfew. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, bills to be paid. You need to wake up very early in the morning to go to work. Yes. So that one also, also affected it. But now that it is there, uh, the two, uh, the, the the big game, yeah. uh, Messi. It's not just a final. It's Messi uh -huh. versus Neymar. Yeah. <laughs> I put my money always. Brazil. <laughs> yeah, and I think it is a great spectacle even for Conmebol because they would have wished for that to be the final. Yes. And I think also again it's being overshadowed because there are no even fans at Brazil. Mm -hmm. Yes. But for Lionel Messi and what it means, mm -hmm. I think it will be great for Lionel Messi to win the Copa America at yeah. Brazil. Yes. Against Brazil mm -hmm. at the same ground in Maracana where he lost the final against Germany in 2014. Yeah. It's going to be incredible. And the two players, Neymar and Lionel Messi, they've been mm. the standard players. Yeah. And Lionel Messi contributing 9 out of 11 goals for them so far in the Copa America. Yes. He, he just shows that this time round, he doesn't have anything that is hanging over his head. Yeah. He's a free agent. He doesn't have anything to think about Barcelona. It's all about Argentina. Uh, w one thing that uh, has come out of this one and has been following Messi, like it's a cheap on his shoulder mm -hmm. has been this conversation that you need that international trophy you need that one trophy that you need to have passed the olympic trophy is just a world cup finalist yes 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 and 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 by the fact that uh, uh, they have their supremacy battles with cristiano ronaldo yes. and uh, cristiano ronaldo having won the euro mm -hmm. uh, messi has to win this cup america mm -hmm. Uh, because most of his critics have been hitting him because of yes. that. Uh, when it comes to the national team, he has not delivered. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is high time that he delivers. Uh, so the pressure uh, will be on him yeah. uh, to, to do the job for Argentina. And uh, if on a good day, if he wakes up on a good day, mm -hmm. yeah. Brazil will be in trouble. Yeah, and he's been having good days. <laughs> yeah, because, he will yes. be, Brazil will be in trouble. Yeah, every Argentina <laughs> fan will say that this is the best version of Messi they have seen in the national team colors. Yes. Yes. Because everyone thought that maybe Lionel Messi is the kind of guy that doesn't talk to anyone, he's just there talking to a girl only. Yes. But this time around you can see the connection that he has either with Di Maria, mm -hmm. with the likes of Lautaro Martinez, yes. Rodrigo De Paul. They all looking uh, like a really compact team. So this is the time. How do you see Brazil lining up for this one? Uh, the same way they've been lining up, you see that they've been doing really well uh, when it comes to uh, Fred in the midfield. Mm -hmm. Uh, to break up play. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's also had a good tournament. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Neymar has uh, had a relatively good tournament. Yeah. Uh, no more side shows. Yeah. Uh, because uh, you look at the, when he was in PSG, there, was, there were a lot of side shows and mm -hmm. uh, it cost the team. Yes. Uh, in Brazil, you've seen the seriousness coming in. Mm -hmm. I think that the, him takes the country uh, more seriously than the club football. Yeah. 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 And to even think that Fred was not even in that team to go to the Copa America, yes. that he was brought in to try and provide a cushion for Douglas Luiz who was on a yellow card, on a yellow and then card, yeah. gets in and has wonderful performances to the extent that now Douglas Luiz is the one being dropped to the Olympic school. <laughs> yes. It's quite lovely. But then the only change maybe expect from Brazil is uh, Gabriel Jesus is missing. Mm -hmm. So they are going to figure out whether Firmino starts or whether it's going to be Everton, yes. who is going to be starting on that right hand side with Lucas Paqueta in behind, mm -hmm. and maybe Richarlison and Neymar up front. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, the back line remains Marquinhos, mm -hmm. plays at the back, the Lord is played there, and Thiago Silva too. So they have a really good squad. I mean, you look at Brazil, you know everyone in that team. So yeah. Ribeiro also from the bench is another guy that they can rely on. Well, it's going to be a tough one considering also Brazil were 
they featured their home ground, I think, in 2014. Yeah. Their home ground, they, they left, yeah. I think, yeah, in the seven final one. stage. No one forgets that. <laughs> 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 so, they had the Thiago Silva, I remember, yeah. they'll be trying to get back into the good books of the Brazilian people, but also Argentina. For them, how do you see them lining up for this final? I think they still go with the Di Maria up front mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Messi, of course, yeah. uh, doing pulling the strings. We have Aguero in the squad, yeah. uh, who has, uh, despite the injury, mm -hmm. he's come in and he's done a good job. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the front, uh, uh, if it clicks, yes. uh, then it's very scary. For, 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 for it will give Brazil uh, a, a lot of trouble. The front three of uh, the front four of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Argentina will give Brazil a lot of a lot of problems. Well, it is the Copa America final. It is the battle of the Americas. The game will be coming your way in the morning between Argentina and Brazil. In Brazil, Maracana will be waiting to see who will be winning that one next week. We'll be talking about the winners and losers of that one but also we also got a chance to talk about the uefa euro final that is happening and majorly what everybody has been following in the world considering that it is england versus italy we're talking about italy now let's look at how this team has come into play and everything but before we talk about the team and everything you are talking about england's good luck this time around <laughs> so you think yeah. their bad omen is done <laughs> yeah i mean you, you, i just mentioned a, a rundown of all the unlucky things that has ever happened to england yes yeah dating back from that diego maradona goal to everything that has happened with beckham mm -hmm. with Saul campbell with frank lampard with that goal with southgate himself i think they were due some luck mm -hmm. and the luck came in through raheem sterling yeah. well <laughs> Maybe I might have a different opinion, but even listening to the referees, yes. Mark Clancherberg talking about that penalty, they needed some kind of confirmation that they should overturn that decision be, being a penalty. Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't find anything that would overturn it yes. because there was contact on Raheem Sterling. Joachim Mala hit him on the right foot yes. and he was there sh struggling on full pace. Mm -hmm. And then Jensen comes in, in another foul on his hip. <laughs> That should be two penalties, actually. How do you, <laughs> then how do you explain the two balls in the field? <laughs> yeah, that has got to be the issue. Exactly. Yes. I, I think the bad luck has just been uh, shifted from the quarter-final, the semi-final, to the final. Yes. So the bad luck will come in the final. They'll lose the final. And oh, but but <laughs> wait, another thing that maybe it's repeating itself, yeah. I don't know whether you've seen that pattern. When you look at the 2012 year, how it happened, yeah. Chelsea won the Champions League, mm. Manchester City won the Premier League, yes. uh, and Italy lost in the final of the Euros. You are clutching on straws. <laughs> <laughs> you are clutching on straws. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss bad anything luck. to go by, yes. the last two have been green ticks. Uh, Chelsea won the Champions League in 2021. <laughs> England, uh, Man Manchester City has won the uh, 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 Premier League title. Mm -hmm. Italy are losing the final. I, I think the, 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 the English fans are the, fans are the most superstitious fans you'll ever, you'll ever yes. think about. I'm sure maybe uh, he'll put on the same clothes he put on when they, 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 were, they were playing in the semi-final. Mm -hmm. So that when they go to the final, they win. They win <laughs> they, they, they are, They're just being superstitious. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think if you look at the reality, there are no better teams that deserve to be in the final than these two. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because you look at what they have been able to do to reach the final, yeah. uh, what they have been able to achieve, the, 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 the time and the effort they have put in. Yes. They, both teams deserve to be in the final. Standout players from the England side, who could you make it that they cannot miss in that final? Uh, first and foremost, Luke Shaw. <laughs> yes. uh, not just because I'm a Manchester United fan, yeah. uh, but look at most of their uh, goals have come in from offset pieces and crosses. Mm -hmm. Their left wing has been their best. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Raheem Sterling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, nobody expected him to perform the way he has performed. And uh, we're just talking off camera. Yes. Uh, Harry Maguire. Yes. Him yes. coming in. England have only considered one goal. Mm -hmm. And came through a set piece. One goal and came through a set piece yeah. throughout the tournament. That <laughs> stability in the defense is brought. When Harry Maguire is there, uh, there's stability, there's calm. And then uh, Kyle Walker also mm, has done well uh, in the English team. And um, Phillips. 
Yeah. Yes. Uh, Calvin Phillips. Phillips. Calvin Phillips. Uh, uh, Phillips came in and uh, he's, he's making those runs mm. forward. Uh, he's holding on to the ball. Mm. He's distributing because you look at people like Mount, there are some games they missed. Mm. Uh, and uh, Phillips was able to do the job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it also seems to be a tournament not for Rashford. No way to be seen in this tournament. Yeah, he was never even in the conversation of starting. <laughs> because, I mean, you look at even the talent that is there. For example, you look at even their whole bench. They kind of lads are seated on their bench. You've got Jack Lee seated there. Yes. You've got the likes of Jaron Sancho. Bukayo Saka has now got a chance over Phil Foden, who is also a brilliant guy. They call him the Stockport in Yester. Yes. So, Marcus Rashford somehow falls in behind that whole list. So, I don't think he was really 100% to get into this competition. Yeah. But again, talking about even the standard players, you would just name the whole team because everyone has been brilliant <laughs> there. Even John Stone probably yeah, yeah. should get the credit because yeah. he started there for, for the whole time. Tyron Mings was also there involved. And Booker Saka also. Um, Harry Kane has come up now, started scoring goals. Even that penalty though he missed and scored the rebound, you can imagine the pressure that was at the back of his head. Uh, putting in that penalty. So you just love everything that has happened through the process because it's yeah. something that Gary Southgate has been working on since 2013. Wow. Talk, talking about the, the bench, I had, I don't know if it was Mancini, uh, saying that uh, the, the England bench is capable of winning the yeah. Euro, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is yes. true yes. because if you look at the players uh, who are on the bench, yeah. uh, they are really good players. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's talked about Marcus Rashford. I don't think Marcus Rashford didn't make it to the team because of talent. Yes. The talent, the potential, he has it. It's just fitness levels. Yeah. Yeah. His fitness levels if you look at even the last games uh, in Manchester United he was underperforming yes so he went into these euros uh, not fully fit and that has, uh, has 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 had an impact and that shows you the swagger that the English team has because if you have such kind of players who are not fit and are not even featuring yeah. and able to reach the final uh, then you have what it takes to win there yeah the, the bit about even those substitutes is that now you have the opportunity to make five you're changing literally half of the outfield players in yes, your yes, team yes. Yes. and so you look at England versus Italy. Still, Italy has kind of a talent in the in the in the bench. I mean, you, you saw in that game when they play against Austria, he had to rely on the likes of Chiesa coming in from the bench, Matteo Pessina. You got Domenico Beraldi also on yes. the bench. Mm. Uh, it's just that that game changer that whoever has a good bench and brings them in the right time because we mm. saw it in the semi-final. Yeah. Denmark somehow played their substitutes quite early on, and they were exhausted at the end. England made 55 consecutive passes in that extra time, yeah. which was the most ever in the Euros game. So that has to be a game changer. Well, one thing that when it comes to the finals, there's a uh, coaches uh, seems to flinch. You forget one manager coming and they flinch. You've seen uh, Mancini's philosophy, work rate mm -hmm. up there, pressing mm -hmm. up there and everything. And then he has, he has had this thing, uh, uh, everybody was talking about it, that uh, for him, he was selected as a player in the 1990 World Cup and mm -hmm. they never had a chance to mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. And so, he has that feeling that every player should play yeah. in the game. Yeah. Can that be an undoing for him when you get to the final, where you see the likes of Pep Guardiola when they come to the big matches? They usually get him in their selections. Let's get Pep out of the question because <laughs> yeah. he's a football madman. <laughs> what he thinks and what he does, uh, he comes out to, uh, with surprises. But I think we are dealing with two cautious managers. Mm. Yes. Uh, they are not going to to spring surprises. If they make a change, maybe one. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Southgate has a tendency to to use the players he trusts, yes. and the players he trusts are the players who have been playing. Because you remember, uh, in the group stages, Harry. Uh, was really low in terms of uh, uh, game ability, yeah. he stuck with him because yeah. he trusts him. Mm. And uh, he, he's not a manager who is going to rush mm. into making changes. Yes. So we are going to see uh, surprises in the final where we have uh, an, uh, maybe four changes, five changes, maybe one or two. Mm. And uh, the systems of play will remain the same. Uh, Manzini is a traditional guy. Yes. So he will stick to what he knows best. Mm. Southgate is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is, a, is, is so pragmatic. much. He's pragmatic. Mm. He's not. Uh, I remember I was criticizing him in one game. Uh, uh, he was playing too defensively. I think in the game against Germany, mm -hmm. he's not bringing in the likes of Kina Grealish. And you wonder what is this guy thinking? He has the talent on the bench, yes. but he's too cautious. And uh, we are going to see a boring final. <laughs> but again, on that question you asked about <laughs> how he's used the substitutes and made sure that everyone plays, yeah. it's so interesting that it's only that that goalkeeper was not played a match for Italy. 
so far. <laughs> yeah, he's the only guy because he was able even to substitute the goalkeeper brought in Sirigu in that game against Wales. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's something that maybe boosts their confidence that he has a team that is so together. And it's the same case that happened to England. Uh, the team just is together. You can see even the, the, the celebrations. Yes. The substitutes are coming in. The Bellinghams are just drawing in to, to celebrate with the team. Yeah. It's all about togetherness right now. And again, talking about even how they're going to line up. I don't think both teams are going to make changes. Maybe the only team for the only thing for England has to be their right wing position because that's where we've seen either Ford and play, we've seen Bukayo play, we've seen Jadon Sancho play. I don't know whether he sticks with Jadon Sancho or whether he sticks with Bukayo Saka in this one. He plays Jadon Sancho. That has to be the only change that maybe he, we feel like he's going to make. But all of them are defensive type of play, uh, coaches. I mean, yes. you, you've got Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips doing the dirty work for you. They've got Giorgino Verratti and Barella doing the other job for you. So I don't know whether even Chiro Immobile might start this one. I have no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> let, 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 let's finish this conversation now. Italy, give me your prediction so that next week I'll know. Italy 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. In uh, 19 minutes. Yes. Right. Oh. They, they, they will not afford to, to push it. They will not afford to push it to 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 to, to extra, extra time, time. Uh, mm. because I don't think they, if it goes to extra time, Italy will be in trouble. Yeah, because they've played, they've been they've, two. they've played two extra of that, eh? time, and they have an aging defense. Yeah, yes. uh, they may not manage the one twenty minutes, mm. so I think they will want to to finish it before the extra time. Yes. Yeah. Two one Italy for Eric here. We'll keep that one in mind, Sammy. Well, I'm a little bit cautious on this. I'll just go with an England win on penalties. <laughs> <laughs> you love penalties, you guys. Eh? <laughs> you know, you know how to win it uh, outright. Yeah, yeah, I'm just sticking to how they, they are going to play because yes. that's what I imagine in my head that they are just going to employ some low blocks. Oh. All managers are going to be cautious. So, so I think yes. what, what he's trying to say is that Southgate will, will want to, to, to stretch it because he knows uh, uh, the, 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 once it goes into extra time, yeah. the, the, the Italians will be tired. Yeah. He will want to take you to that. I, I think that has got to be <laughs> at the back of his head. Really. <laughs> because he's got young yeah. players. What you need is just winning. Yeah. Yeah. Winning. It yeah. doesn't matter it how. It doesn't matter how you do uh, it. Those are the England fans. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be waiting to see how the match will be padding out. England versus Italy will be the final of the Euro 2020. A final that is being played in this time of the pandemic. But has brought a lot of hope into people. And the people are actually now getting back into their normal lives. You can see even fans there at the stadium. Robert Osoro for the touchline here. Eric Aganya is my sports analyst alongside Sami Gitai and we're still having fun talking about everything that is all about football. We have not been on air for at least two months but now we are back and the banter has to go on. Let's look at some of the transfers that have been happening all over the world considering that September is here, August is here actually, and the legs will be resuming and people have got to play. And finally, Manchester United have landed their man in Jadon Sancho. Some good, good news there for Manchester United? Good news because we've, we've just after this kid for three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for three years. A, a good but time that uh, we uh, uh, Yeah, yeah, we've just yeah. after him for three years. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this time round he really wanted to come. Uh, yes. uh, I think uh, he's done a lot for, 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 for Dortmund yeah, at, at, at his early age, he's 21. Uh, and if the stats are to go by, although we know that the, uh, the English game is a little bit different, mm -hmm. uh, if the stats are to go by, then it's a good signing for Manchester United. What I liked about the deal, the deal had been stretched on performance. Uh, it's not that we are, uh, Manchester United paid a lump sum. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, the add-on will come as, per, he, as he performs. Yeah. The question is, mm -hmm. is it now the last piece of the puzzle for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? to have that team that now will move away from the semi-finals and start winning critical matches? Well, no, I don't think that's the last piece of the puzzle that maybe Ole Gunnar needs. Yeah. Because, I mean, even with Jadon Sancho in the team, you still can't have some wonderful comparison with it with Manchester City or maybe Liverpool. Because I think Man United still need a centre-back, maybe a, a good centre-back pairing for Harry Maguire. That's also on the cards, and that's why you're hearing rumors about Rafael Varane. I don't know if it's going to happen, but yes. there needs to be a centre-back partner for Harry Maguire. Maybe it's going to be a little bit different than him. Maybe yeah. he plays on the right foot, and he's good on the air, and he's good on the ball, and a little bit calmer. And also even in the central midfield, that's another question. Fred has been having a good performance for Brazil. 
and it, does, it just doesn't reflect at Man United yes. because we, we often play with two of them, with Fred and McTominay. So maybe we find one guy, maybe I would really opt for a guy like a Declan Rice, mm -hmm. a Wilfred Didi or even a Calvin Phillips would do that job for us. And again, maybe those who wouldn't happen in the same transfer window, but also even the, the centre forward. Yeah. Edison Cavani probably would be playing in all the matches. It would be good to have another guy, maybe an understudy who would get him this season and then next season will be starting there. But for Verana coming will be a hard toll considering that Real Madrid lost their star man to Paris Saint Germain. No, no, what, what, I, what I've heard, what I've read is that uh, he wants to come. Yeah. He wants to leave, uh, he wants a new challenge. Uh. Yeah. What they're haggling over is the price. Mm. Uh, the price is a problem, but uh, he's clearly told uh, Real Madrid he wants to move to England, he wants a new challenge. Yeah. And uh, the issue will be the price. As he's mentioned, uh, if uh, Manchester United is able to get a central, def a central defender, it will be good. A transfer that should not be allowed to happen in my terms as a Manchester United fan mm. is Hurricane to Man City. That we should not allow <laughs> it to happen. <laughs> because the moment that happens, uh, oh my, man. we are in he trouble. Man. <laughs> the league will stay in Man City. Uh, it will be trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the good thing also with Real Madrid is not that Sergio Ramos has left a hole in there. David yeah. Alaba also joined the team, so he yeah, could yeah, use yeah, the yeah, left back yeah, in the center back. back. Yeah. Yeah. But also, no one thought in this time that Sergio Ramos could leave Real Madrid mm -hmm. to another team. I think Real Madrid have a problem and, uh, and uh, Barcelona also have the same problems because uh, this guy has died for this team. Yes. Uh, this, guy is, this guy is a hero. Yeah. Uh, I think they, 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 need, to, good yes, mm -hmm. they need to start yeah, treating their heroes uh, yeah. better. You saw what, uh, what, what Barcelona did to Suarez yes. mm -hmm. and uh, he came to buy them back. <laughs> so I think these two teams uh, need to start treating their heroes in a better manner. Uh, because uh, what was the biggest problem giving him a two-year a two contract and a one-year contract? Mm. Give him a two-year contract, let him nurture others. Mm. Uh, he was ready to pay to take a pay cut. Mm. You see, he, he, his whole life he's been in Madrid mm. yes. and uh, he was ready to, to, to be there. Well, I think maybe he was treated in a good way. Um, I somehow felt as a Real Madrid fan that he had lost his place at the centre back because I mean we had Militao and Nacho who were really outperforming him and he wasn't fit for that season. Yes. So I felt like even with the send up that he was given, it was brilliant because you never <laughs> see those things happening. <laughs> but again, also against uh, about PSG, I don't understand why they made that change because you can imagine they had Thiago Silva on their books yes. and they let him live on a free. And they also brought in another old guy inside Jerome, same age with him, and give him a two-year contract. I don't understand what's happening there because they would have easily stuck with Thiago Silva yes. in the back. I, I think Thiago Silva was was a case of uh, if you read properly, you find that it was a case of him not being in good terms with Tuchel, mm -hmm. and he had to leave. Yes. And uh, upon Pochettino coming in, mm -hmm. Pochettino, you find that uh, in the last. Uh, 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 European tournament, uh, uh, UEFA Champions League, he had a problem with egos mm -hmm. and yes. bringing together his players. Mm -hmm. So he's brought in a leader. Mm -hmm. And if uh, he's able to use Sergio Ramos, Sergio Ramos has achieved everything. Mm -hmm. He's seen everything. Mm -hmm. He'll calm down Neymar, tell him, hey, look here. Yes. Why, why are you playing? Why are you, what are you doing? Yeah, what have you won? <laughs> You've not won anything. You see, that what, yes. what, what Thiago Silva brought into Chelsea. Mm -hmm. That's what yes. they now want. They realize they made a mistake with Thiago Silva. Yeah. Yes. So now they, they went for Sergio Ramos mm -hmm. to, to try and help the coach. Yes. And uh, one of the reasons Pochettino wanted to leave, but upon the signing of Ramos, uh, he'll stay. Yeah. Yes. Because he feels that these are players who can control the dressing room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A, a big one there. They also brought in Juan Landam from Liverpool. Oh, yes. I thought Juan Landam would go to, to Barcelona. Barcelona. Everybody yeah, thought so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he was offered a little bit more. More, yeah. Yes. By PSG. yeah. 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 Uh, but it seems that Pochettino is really building a very good team in PSG at the moment to compete again as one of the best when it comes to Champions League football. Yeah, he's bringing in experience. He's bringing in players who, because he has the talent. He has Mbappe. Mm -hmm. He has, uh, and you see, uh, PSG have struggled for two seasons uh, with Pochettino and the other one without Pochettino, Pochettino. Yes. Uh, uh, in the in the in the European tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, they want, they really won the Champions League. And even this time round, they didn't even win their domestic league. Yeah, yes. uh, they didn't even win. So they have to bring in experience. Mm -hmm. They have to bring in somebody who is going to calm down these egos. Because you find that uh, uh, against Germany the other time, yes. it was uh, uh, against uh, Bayern Munich, it was mm -hmm. an issue of egos. 
coming yes. in. Bayern Munich as a coming as a team, mm. they are coming as an individual. Look mm. at what happened in, uh, against Man City. Yes. Uh, the, 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 mm. Di Maria, yeah, they are crumbling. Yeah. <laughs> you see, yeah, he's now bringing in some go, some guys who've won. Mm. Uh, and know how to play. And know teams. how to play as a team. Yes. yes. Yeah. What he built at Tottenham, yeah. he built teamwork with normal players. Mm -hmm. So he's doing the same. Yeah. A big one there for Paris Saint-Germain and Mauricio Pochettino to see if he can come back and win the Champions League because that is the one trophy that is invading Paris Saint-Germain. But also some of the other transfers that have been happening. Danny Rose has now finally left to <laughs> Watford. They have also brought in Joshua King. Yeah, mm -hmm. Watford are now, oh, you know, they've come back to the, to the Premier to League. The Premier, yes. uh, kudos to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have to, to, to bring in one experience. They have to bring in more players mm -hmm. uh, because they need uh, to have uh, Premier League experience. Yeah. Experience players mm -hmm. and also a big squad. Mm -hmm. Because you realize that once you get into the Premier League, yeah. you are competing in uh, many cups. So you need a big, big squad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I thought those were really good signings for them because they bring some kind of experience that they need in the Premier League. Joshua King has been there with Bournemouth and last season yes. with Everton maybe didn't get the time that he needed there. And even Danny Rose, I mean, he just fell off a cliff, but he's a really good player. We saw what he can do yeah. at Tottenham Mospa. And so for Watford coming back, they still got another experience in there with the likes of trading in the team. Mm -hmm. So they are kind of realizing the mistake that they made at go. Mm -hmm. In the in the season where they fell and they still maintained the core and that's why they were able to come back. Ismail Asai is also part of that team. Azmir Begovic is also part of that team. So I think they are going to be one of the teams that maybe they come in and they try to remain in the Prem. For a very good time. But also one team that uh, Marcelo Biesla, the Leeds United manager, mm -hmm. uh, they had the previous transfer window, he really signed many yeah. players. Mm -hmm. But this time around he's just signing Junior Philip only. He, he, he's doing, he's just reinforcing because mm. he already has a team now. Yeah. So he's just reinforcing and uh, bearing in mind that uh, uh, you find that teams like Leeds and small teams like those ones, they have also a tight budget. Yes. So uh, they may not have the finances uh, uh, to bring in the big names. Mm -hmm. But uh, a local has a way of dealing with the normal players yeah. to turn them into, uh, into, into great ball players. Yeah. 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 And I think also for, for Leeds United, it's been a wonderful week. I mean, yes. for them signing a, a, a Barcelona player, Mm. But at the same time, having their very own, they call it the Yorkshire Pillow, getting yes. into the final of the Euros, <laughs> yes. it's been wonderful for them. But I think that signing was basically brought in to seal that position of ex Alioski who's leaving the team. Yes. So definitely, Firpo is going to slot in at the left back position. Well, Genduzi also now. Yeah, he's also joining Marseille, Marseille, Marseille together with the likes of William Saliba in that team. Mm -hmm. And also I've heard about Kengi Zunda, who is also joining there from Roma, together with their goalkeeper Lopez. Mm -hmm. San Paoli, who is their manager, is a real good disciple of Marcelo Bielsa. Mm -hmm. yes. And I was following up the kind of signings that San Paoli has been able to do at Santos in Brazil, mm -hmm. and also at Athletic MG. He's that kind of a manager that comes in and wants the checkbook and does the signings that believes are going to do the job for him. And so this time round, I think he is ready for the job and probably we should see Marcel get back into the big time. <laughs> it is the touch right here on Y254 at Y254 channel is where you can find us. Hashtag is the touch line at Mirumbe Soro at Wasike Maxwell at at Sam Gita he's seven. At Erika Ganya. At Erika Ganya. That's where you can find us on social media and actually interact with us. I know the banter on social media is very high up there, up in that level, considering that two powerhouses in the world of football are clashing at Wimbledon tomorrow, but also we've got the Copa America, where also the greatest of greatest of the players that have graced these fields also will be playing in that final. But we cannot leave this set without talking also about the changes when it comes to management, considering that one player, one former player that is now coming back on to management and that will be in England has got to be Patrick Vieira coming on to be the coach of Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace. That is a major move for Patrick Vieira himself. Yeah, yeah, major move uh, for Patrick Vieira. And remember, uh, 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 he's, he's been... Uh, training he's been he's been he's been in coaching but not in england yes. mm -hmm. and him coming into uh, back into england we know what he has done as a player for yes, us yeah. and uh, i like it when former players are taking up management mm -hmm. and uh, coming in and doing the job yes uh, i love that 
is it a big role for him? Because I remember when he joined management, he was sent to the New York Red Bulls. Yes. Mm -hmm. But performance-wise, even in the MLS, yeah. that team was never that good. Yes. Uh, 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 it may not be really big because you're talking about Crystal Palace, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it will be challenging yeah. for him. Yes. It will be a big challenge because remember, uh, uh, Roy Hodgson, uh, was there mm. with all his experience. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he didn't do a, a much as expected last season. Mm. Uh, he didn't perform really well. Yeah. And um, the key here will be holding on to the key players like uh, Zaha mm. yes. and uh, and the likes, mm. and also bringing. Uh, he's, also, he's already brought in a reinforcement. Yeah, yeah, Michael Reading. Reading. from Reading. Mm. So bringing in reinforcements, mm. but it's a it's a it's a wait and see game. Yeah. But it is going to fill in big shoes. Robots on yeah. shows are no easy feel. Yeah, and you know, I was listening to some Crystal Palace fans. Yes. Well, that is not the move they would have wanted to see Patrick Vieira into their team because they, they feel like his career has somehow been tainted by the performances he had. Remember, he just came on from OGC Nice yes. in France, and it wasn't good. You remember even when the fans uh, disrupted their training session? Yes. I don't know whether he's going to have a good time there because I expected it to be kind, some kind of a major rebuild from Steve Parrish. Because when you go back to their books, they had lots of players out of contact and they had to seal them all and yes. they've only sealed a few for Ben Cheke and I guess for Wilfred Zaha but what remains is a really young core of young players as is mentioned with Michael Loise coming in from Reading yeah. they still got a bridge years away that was really brilliant and season who came in from Crystal Palace and they've got Eric Mitchell who plays at strike back who is also a brilliant player so probably we are talking about the same positioning from Crystal Palace we just know they're gonna finish in that lower mediocrity of 12, <laughs> 13, and 14. That's where I expect them to be. But anything less than that, then he got to go. All we can say is good luck to Patrick Vieira. Next season, we'll be waiting on the touchline and see how the Eagles will be performing. But also, one manager who came on to the English Premier League and also had a very good impact has got to the former Wolves coach, the Portuguese Nuno Espirinto, now joining Tottenham Hotspur. Big feel for him? Mm, no. He now understands the league <laughs> and can win something with Tottenham. I, I think he has what it takes because you remember that uh, he took uh, a Wolves team uh, from down, yes. a Wolves team that uh, they don't have a big budget, yes. and he was able to do wonders uh, with them. It's only last season that uh, he didn't mm. do very well, yes. and it was expected. One, he had a small team. Two injuries, injuries came in, yes. and uh, three also uh, they sold their key they players, the yeah. likes of uh, Jota, and they did not replace them. Yeah. So with the Tottenham team, uh, I think he was the best candidate, bearing in mind that Tottenham are not a team that splashes out money yes. uh, to, to, to buy players. So he, I, I look at him as a, a, a coach who is going to, 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 to keep them where they belong, yes. in the top six. Well, for me, it's tough. Yeah, I think for him because uh, I think some of the players at the Tottenham now currently at Tottenham mm. a bit older players compared to the players he left at Wolves. Yeah, and the, mm. and the big question for me I think when he, we got that confirmation that he's joining Spurs was is he good enough that he's going to retain and Harry Kane in that team? Mm -hmm. Is he the kind of candidate that was needed there? Yeah. But listening to the Spurs fans, first of all they were happy that finally Finally, they've got a manager because it was a long <laughs> process of carousel. Yes. I don't know, Conte is supposed to come, for Tino, all those names that are being mentioned. Yeah. But coming back again to Nuno Espirito Santo, probably it was not the best move that maybe Spurs fans wanted because there were questions about what Daniel Levy is offering and mm. maybe what they're going to spend on. Yes. So philosophy-wise, I don't think he's going to get away from what you've seen him do at Wolves. Yeah playing a back three and maybe having a, a kind of a defensive kind of a shape up. Yeah. Spans fans have been really bored with Jose Mourinho kind of football and this is another <laughs> time where they're gonna see that again. Yes. So probably you'll see what happens in the next few days with Hurricane. Whether he stays or not, then that's going to be something that Spans fans will be looking forward to. Big decision for him actually, and also for Harry Kane. Let's wait for the Euros to come to an end, and we'll see which destination is going to take. But you have already said you don't want too much Man City. Harry Better Kane, Madrid or PSG, le, le, uh, no, no, he, he doesn't want to go abroad. Eh? Yes. And uh, and uh, uh, the only teams that can buy him right now are three: that is Manchester United, Man City, and Chelsea. Mm, yeah. And uh, he's favoring the, uh, uh, the. I don't think Tottenham will sell to a fellow London team. Yes, they yeah. will not sell to yeah. to 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 to, to mm. Chelsea. Mm. So 
he's favoring Man City because uh, he what he wants he wants trophies. Yes. Uh, he wants trophies, and that's the only guarantee. At his stage of his at his career. Stage. At and uh, why I was saying I, I wouldn't wish to have him at Man City is because, you see, we were just being happy that Man City have lost Sergio Aguero. Now, yeah. Ken comes Ken in. Ken comes in. Yeah. Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but also even in that sense, I think uh, yes. Daniel Levy is the guy on the driving seat because you remember that Harry Kane signed a four-year contract, so yeah. it's not yet done. Yeah. He's the one to control the release contract on what's really going to be spent on him. Yes. And having the situation that Harry Kane is yeah. going to be a European champion in the next few hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> These England fans. <laughs> yeah. that his is value will already skyrocket. Yeah. <laughs> and if he scores in the final, uh, and Ali, uh, Daniel Levy has asked for 150, he will not bend, he will not go lower than that. Yeah, so you can imagine what <laughs> maybe teams are going to part with to mm -hmm. get Harry Kane. Mm. Really bad by day. Yeah. But <laughs> let, let's finish off with one manager who is coming back back to Marseille side and is not going back to his former club, that is Rafael Benitez taking on Everton. Mm -hmm. A big loss to Everton because uh, bearing in mind that you had uh, Carlo mm -hmm. Ancelotti, yes. uh, I don't know if Benitez will be able to, 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 to keep the likes of Rodriguez, Hamez mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. at, 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 at Everton, yes. the, the likes of Richardson. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he'll be able to, to, to hold on to such kind of players. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the biggest challenge. And uh, if he's able to hold on to them, he's a manager who plays direct football. Yes. Uh, he's a great tactician. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw what he was able to do with uh, Liverpool especially. Yeah. He had a good stint at Liverpool. Yeah, uh, and Real Madrid. And uh, Real Madrid. Yes. So he's a good manager. Uh, but I don't know if he'll be able to hold on to those players. Yeah, you know, I'll agree with what you were saying off the camera that Everton are somehow pushing to upper limits. That yes. Yes, they brought in a guy like Carlo Ancelotti mm -hmm. and probably didn't do the, the good job, probably because he didn't have even enough time to, mm -hmm. to maybe build a team. Yes. And now they've had another brilliant manager in Rafael Benitez. The issue has to be how they spend, because they can spend cash, but who do they spend on? Yes. They spend on Joshua King last season, who didn't even play a single game, maybe yeah. play from the bench. And then some signings that maybe you bring in Alex we will be you know the kind of signings you want. Mm -hmm. He also brought in a guy like Jean-Pierre Gbami, who was injured for the whole season. So mm -hmm. such kind of things that maybe are going to be put into detail by Farah Moshiri, yeah. that they signed the right guys that are going to help Benitez. But, but look Bami. at the talent in terms of managers in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fireworks. Let's finish it there because that's <laughs> where we come to the end of the touchline here on Y254. Brazil, Italy. Those are your teams? Yes. Brazil, England. Brazil, England. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here next week for another edition of the Touchline and we'll be giving you all the details on how these finals go ahead. I'm Robert Osoro on behalf of Sami Gitai, Eric Aganya, and everybody who has made this broadcast a success. We say good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast. Come on, England. <laughs>